Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week. Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of Classic Restos. Of course, not possible without the continued support of my major sponsors. When it comes time for the very best in classic vehicle, home and contents insurance, along with an opportunity to sign up to become a member of the Shannons Club and where the Penrite Technical Assistance Team is there to help us seven days a week, go to classicrestos.com.au for more major sponsor contact information. And on today's incredible show, this is the first event filmed in 2015. It is also the first episode in series 26 of Classic Restos. I am proud to bring you the Geelong Classic Truck and Vintage Machinery Show, where mechanical marvels from yesteryear will truly blow your mind. And unlike the refined engines that we're used to today, these old girls hiss, bang and piss and roll along like a Rolex in their own special way. This event represents where the engines that we know today all began. These engines had their parts on the outside, most externally lubricated. In fact, with some, there's more oil on the outside of the engine than on the inside. The masters of these prehistoric combustion plants were true engineers. They were designed without computer technology, and the owners that bought them maintained them. If they weren't on top of them, they were under them. These things replaced the horse. Farmers back in the day were often skeptical, didn't know whether to trust the machinery. They were high maintenance, but they didn't jump the fence and disappear every time there was a storm. An event such as this attracts more variety and things to see than a kid in a candy store. Time now to go take a closer look. Okay, in the steam machinery shed here at Geelong Showgrounds in Victoria, Australia, we have Thomas. How are you, Thomas? I'm all right. How are you, mate? Good, good. This is brilliant in here. You could just spend a day in here walking around. Oh, I have to spend many days in here walking around and oiling things and starting engines, stopping them again. Thomas, I've got to comment on the way that you dress. You have the bowler hat. What uh, what era? 20s? Uh, where are you themed? Um, actually, a bit earlier than that. We're, um, the, this, uh, the hat and the style of the day dates from about 1890 or so. Um, the hat, the reason why I'm wearing the hat is because the foreman of the work crew would wear a bowler hat, so if you're ever looking at a black and white photograph and you see a bloke in a bowler hat, he would be either the foreman or the engine owner. That's amazing. Now, Thomas, tell us about uh, what people can expect to see in a shed such as this. OK, well, um, down here at the Geelong Showgrounds, we've got uh, 16 steam engines on display in just the steam section, and they range from about a 1,000 horsepower ship engine over there down to uh, small uh, industrial engines from about uh, 1910. Uh, we've got two boilers over here to our left running them. Uh, one's automated and one's an underfired boiler from 1912 that used to run the Geelong College. Unbelievable history here. Thomas, when we talk of the 1,000 horsepower engine out of the ship, yes. the torque that that produces must be immense. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very slow revving. 1,000 horsepower at about uh, 60 or 100 RPM. So it's, it, the torque is just through the roof. It's amazing, yeah. Uh, the cylinders in it, there's three different sizes of cylinders and the largest one is about four foot across with a stroke of about three foot. We're talking stuff with massive journals. Did these engines actually wear out or were they just simply superseded? Um, well, actually, yeah, the, in a lot of ways, um, diesel engines came around and they were a, a lot more economical, but um, that, that engine behind us, it's got one slack bearing, but from after 100 years of work, it's 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 pretty tidy. We haven't done any maintenance to it. It's just got pulled out of the ship and put on display here. What does that say, though, for technology from back in that time? Well, the technology is very simple, and it was built to last. There's none of this, uh, you know, um, uh, designed obsolescence, if you like, or, or something wearing out so you can sell the new model. Um, that ship engine was designed to last 80 or 100 years. We've just seen so much change over the years. I mean, uh, as I've mentioned to and alluded to many times before on Classic Restos, back in an era too where there was no computer technology, I still just cannot believe it was just clever people up here and back to the drawing board. 
That's right. It was all drawn and designed by hand and, and calculations done with a slide rule and four-figure log table. Thomas, tell us some of the uh, mechanical specifications of this old goal behind us here that's working so hard at the moment. <laughs> well, it's, it's working hard turning over its own crankshaft at the moment. But, uh, yeah, this is um, it's what they call a long-stroke mill engine. It uh, was used uh, all its life down at Fowler's Mill, about a K down the road here. Um, it's the oldest engine on display here and probably the oldest thing we have on site. Um, but by far the most interesting thing is the flywheel and way, the way it's made. Ten foot diameter, it's made in two halves that are held together with wedges and it's not machined. It runs that true and that plumb without having ever been anywhere near a machine. It's never been turned out or bored or machined true, it's just the way it was cast. And that's, I find that amazing. It just goes to show uh, how precise the castings that they were using back in those times. Yeah, well, the, the pattern makers must have been fairly smart, I reckon, and the foundrymen. Mate, they didn't have big nights the night before, did they? No, no, you wouldn't turn up uh, Monday morning with a hangover, that's for sure. You get sacked for that. Thomas, wonderful talking to you, mate. I mean, I just think it's wonderful that you're keeping this tradition alive. Uh, you're a wealth of information and knowledge. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you even dress in theme and you, you take it so seriously, but it's a bit of fun along the way as well. Oh, that's right. You've, you've got to be here to enjoy yourself and have fun and, and pass on a little bit of that knowledge and history to the general public. Yep. Um, there's a bit of an education thing that needs to happen for, uh, for people that don't know about these steam engines. So, And also teaching the younger guys. Yep. Good on you, Thomas. Good on you, Fletch. Thank you. Don't forget, for the best in classic vehicle home and contents insurance, along with an opportunity to sign up to become a member of the Shannons Club, and the Penrite Technical Assistance Team is there to help us seven days a week. For more major sponsor contact information, go to classicrestos.com.au. You're watching the Geelong Classic Truck and Vintage Machinery Show. Back with more right after this. Now we've seen some massive engines here at the Zhong Showground for this fantastic event, down to some small engines as well now. Ray, this engine behind us has some incredible history. Tell us about it. Well, Henry Ford, in 1893, made his first petrol combustion, internal combustion engine. He, uh, he knew there were other ones around and he wanted to do something. He worked with steam all his life. And uh, he decided that steam was uh, on the way out. So he thought, well, and he's a self-made man, he wanted to do everything himself. So he decided, I'll, I'll make an engine, get the principle working, you know. So Fletchie made this thing here. And um, from there on, he went to the quadricycle. He only ran this for 30 seconds, scared the be living daylights out of his wife. They, they put it on the kitchen sink yep. because they didn't have a spark plug in those days and he used the electricity from the overhead globe on the sink. Yep and uh, connected that onto the engine. When the piston came to the top, it touched a little wire, made a spark, and uh, that, that, was, that was his ignition system. Such a simple single cylinder engine made out of gal pipe and plumbing fittings. Unbelievable. Yeah, he, he being a, a man that worked with steam, he had a availability, all the sort of stuff. It's, it's all made out of uh, common threaded one inch and yeah. half inch, easily available stuff. Yeah. and. Uh, and, and so is this one. It just went from there. And you can actually see this engine, the real one, at the Paquette building as a part of the Fletch Tour. Find out more information when you visit FletchTours.com. Ray, thanks so much for being on today's show, mate. It's, uh, it's great to see guys like you carrying on such incredible tradition. Oh, I appreciate it, Fletch. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. You, mate. Look after those pipe fitness too. Yep, I certainly will. Make sure they don't rust on you. No, no, no. Nothing will rust. <laughs> Plenty of oil on it. <laughs> Okay, moving through with Pete now. How are you, Peter? Yeah, good, thanks, Fletch. That's why, right, mate. Jeez, mate, uh, what year model are we talking about here? Yeah, 1921. Oh, so you're into the late model stuff? Yeah, oh, this is a, the newest one I own. Yeah. <laughs> now, tell us, Brand, tell us about this old girl, the incredible history, what you can about this machine. All right, um, it's a 1921 uh, Jalbart, made by Jalbart Brothers in uh, Ballarat. So it's a local tractor, all Australian. That's what I like, yeah. all the good gear. Um, Apparently spent its working life up in the Coondrook Forest, up on the Murray River, carting logs and hauling logs out the back of the, down to a uh, sawmill. These ones were very quickly superseded by the uh, American tractors coming in um, in the very early 20s, the internationals all uh, 
taken a, a fairly big chunk of the market and uh, wiped out most of the local tractor producers by about 1928. Peter, lots of moving parts. Were they reliable back in their day? Um, well, hopefully they were, but uh, we seem to think they weren't that reliable. That's why they're still around. Yeah. yeah so. I mean, obviously a lot of maintenance. Uh, yeah, a fair bit of maintenance in them, yep. Bit Tell of... me, like, in terms of the passion when we, we talk of these old engines, what is it that you love about them? Um, oh, the noise, mainly, um, and it's something totally different to what I do during the week, so just a, a bit of a break, and uh, with my son, it's just something we do together, so um, he, he seems to like getting all the junk out and uh, flogging it around. So. Tell us about the supercharger, how does that work? Uh, it's just a secondary piston that hangs off the back of the motor, um, and it's just basically a big air compressor air compressor that charges the, the fuel system and uh, rushes past the so-called carby and uh, pressurises the fuel and uh, shoots it in there. So we're talking 1921. Yep. 1921 with that technology. Yeah, that's a go. Yeah, so. And I tell you what, mate, you've got the radial tune suspension up front too and you've got the 44-gallon drum sitting on front. Mate, you've got the hamburger with a lot with this fam on. Got all the good gear, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, yeah, not just the old GL model. Yeah, yeah. Good <laughs> right, Peter, great catching up with you. Beauty. Thanks, Fletch. No Thanks for your time. We've got Steve now, the chairman of the Geelong Classic Truck and Vintage Machinery Show. Did I say that right, Steve? That's correct. Yeah. You didn't get it wrong at all. It's, it's quite a tongue twister. It's but a mouthful, isn't it? It is. And it has to be a mouthful. You know why? Big title to such a big event. There's so much diverse stuff going on here. You've done it again. What a huge year so far, Steve. We've had an excellent turn up of trucks, cars, um, hobby groups with... Yep. All sorts of toys, as you probably see. Run through some of the categories that people can expect to see at this incredible event here in Geelong. Well, probably the highlights, the vintage trucks, then comes the tractor pull and the vintage machinery shed with all the live steam gear and large oil engines. Isn't the tractor pull something? Oh, it's great. Yeah, we've got a lot of young guys there. and um, Really, if it wasn't for their enthusiasm, it wouldn't be happening. Just the age of some of these machines and uh, the meticulous care that they demand and then they turn up at an event such as this, see them working in action and uh, the guys are so approachable, they're so proud of them, it's just a, it's just wonderful isn't it? Yep, it's great, yeah. We've got a lot of older guys here, like they've hit their 80s and now they've sort of uh, hung up the tool belt and they're not doing it anymore but they are just so happy and even some of them get very emotional about seeing the young guys there and it's a relief for them seeing that it's going to continue on. You're watching the show and you want to find out more information I mean it is on every year here at the Jong Showgrounds and as I've alluded to it is an incredible event. What's the website Steve? A website? Well it's actually you know, on the computer you know that oh, thing you know. That. We've got Facebook. <laughs> That's all right mention Facebook. Yeah Facebook's the one it's uh, Geelong Classic truck and vintage machinery show um, so you've got to put the HHTP thing in front sometimes when you're searching but yeah, yeah. you'll come up with a lot of information yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do a Google if in doubt good on you mate Steve keep up the good work mate yeah. and uh, look what an effort I mean this is definitely another show where you know come tomorrow Monday I guess the wheels are in motion then to organize for next year already in motion yeah, yeah, yeah we've been talking to some of the um, exhibitors here and they're saying we're back next year so it's already happening yeah, good on you Steve congratulations thank you uh, no worries, Fletch. And thank you. Look, here's a little stick bit of appreciation. Just oh, that's nice. Yeah. Fletch gets a prezi. He went to shake hands with the main man and he hands him this. Yeah. The certificate of appreciation for basically being here. That's Thank you so much. That's very nice, Steve. Thank no you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Good Great on. to have you come here Thanks, and mate. do our show. Well okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. If you can see yourself travelling to the United States this year in 2015 and taking in the highlights of a Fletch tour, have a look at this. You deserve a Fletch Tour. See the amazing Ford, GM and Chrysler Nationals at Carlisle events along with museums and private collections in beautiful Pennsylvania, USA. Then it's the Motown city of Detroit and its region taking in more die-hard stuff with incredible history. Rounding off with the Woodward Dream Cruise, the largest moving car cruise in the world. It just makes it so much easier on yourself when Fletch Picks you up, drives you around. Laughs, lots of laughs. <laughs> More than what I expected. I'm definitely coming back again. Go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours icon for more information. Hope you're enjoying today's show. Back with more after this. Well, here we are, the Geelong Classic Truck and Vintage Machinery Show. How awesome is it? And we have John now. John, how are you? Good, thanks, Seth. 
that's, that's the way, mate. Look at this. Dodge behind us here. What a beautiful thing. You know, the biggest thing that amazes me here, 1979. Now, this is the last year for this shape. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, after they ceased, I believe, uh, they ceased operation after this, after this model. And, um, yeah, she's one of the last old girls around, you know. I didn't know that they ran so late into 79. I mean, these were interstate units, you know. I mean, they uh, really did haul the mail back in the day, didn't they? They did, yeah. They were doing, you know, I know some of the locals who were running uh, Sydney, Brisbane with vegetables, yeah. you know, the, the the, the, the local merchants around here and uh, over to Warnable, yeah. right? So they, they were they were doing it hard, and you know, but they but they did it. Yeah? Now, John, you've done a great job on this. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, now let's we'll start with the engine. I mean, it looks like a million dollars sitting up front here. Six fifty three GM. Correct. Six fifty three uh, V six, um, rebuilt right from the um, sump plug right to the wing nut of the aircraft. Some, I'm glad you said sump plug. You get, <laughs> oh, you've always got to do your sump plug. You've always got to. Do it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we um, completely dismantled it. Um, I've got an engineer in workshop. So it made it made it made life a bit easier. Yeah. Um, you know, we did the crank, the bores, the pistons, the, the deck, the block. The, we put a set of jake brakes on it. Yeah. Um, you know, because they don't they didn't really like slowing down that good. So um, yes, yeah, so we went right over it. It yeah. was a shame to slow them down too, because it took so long to get them going, get didn't it? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. You, you're on the highway, and you see these big jiggers just flying past you. You know, or at the stoplights. You know. So John, what's it licensed to carry? How much weight on the back? On the back, 13 ton. This oh. one's up for 13 ton. It's got a triaxle uh, uh, freighter trailer on it, um, and the overall gross weight, I believe, is, is in excess of 20 tonnes. Yeah, right? sure. Right. Yeah. We don't drive it for um, for money purposes. We just yeah. do, did it up, and the boys like going around the countryside with it. What I love it too. I mean, to think 1979, the the last of this shape, as I mentioned earlier. But when we look inside, it's still got that old truck look. But they've tried just in the end, just to you know, dress it up a little bit, like you know, some nice door cards. Right. The dashboard still. It, it looks like a truck. Yeah, yeah. They um, this one actually has got a, an accessory, uh, what they call a slimline cabin, bucket seats, um, which are as rough as guts when you're driving it, but um, uh, and the console in the middle, you know. So um, yeah, that, that's that's it. Yeah. Walk us through the drive line. What's the uh, gearbox? It's got a it's got a Road Ranger uh, RC six one zero overdrive, um, and um, then it's got the two Rockwell differentials. Yep. And um, they've all been done up. Though. We did find them um, a bit worse for wear. Yeah. So we, we, we opened them right up and um, remachined uh, what had to be done, met the hard face and, you know, uh, metal spray. John, it's a credit to you, mate. And I know that you had a little bit of uh, help with the truck as well. Uh, the team of, team of guys helped you, whoever they were, mate. They yeah. did a fantastic yeah. job. Well, we've had, you know, the, like there's been, as I said, we've got the workshop and we have, have some apprentices. And when, when things are a bit quiet, right, oh, boys, on, onto the truck, you know. Good on you, Good on you John. <laughs> okay, thanks, Fletch. That's all right. Beauty. My pleasure. I mean, yeah. You just can't walk past a truck like this, mate. That's, that's fantastic. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. As a part of the Geelong Classic Truck and Vintage Machinery Show, things are not complete without, of course, the attendance of an aeroplane engine. This is a Pratt and Whitney 830 cubic inch, 1200 horsepower turbo supercharged radial engine. And four of these mounted onto a B24M Liberator bomber could manage 30,000 feet and 300 miles per hour. These engines sucked fuel through lines bigger than your garden hose, carrying almost 9,000 litres of fuel in the wing tanks and almost 14,000 litres of fuel in the outer wing and Bombay tanks. This incredible version of the Pratt & Whitney aeroplane engine was released in 1939, providing reliable service throughout World War II. It's classic trucks, it's classic machinery. We've got George here. How are you, George? Very well, thanks. Thank you, sir. Good, mate. Good. Now, look, not only do you have an incredible old international truck here, uh, you, you, you're disabled. You, you've got one arm, but you're a legend because you do everything with the other arm. That's what they tell me. I'm a legend. To me, I was brought up having go with anything. Yep. If you can't do it, you're the only person that knows that you can't. I've never had an arm. An arm. And the old saying, what you haven't got, you don't miss. In the cabin there, I have an artificial arm. Yep. I'll show you after. The swim scene over my shoulder, and it's all that changes the gear. How long have you been driving trucks for? Well, uh, oh, now what? I'm not very old, old in driving compared to a lot of them. I suppose about, about 60, 65 or something. Right. Two. Four, five. 
It's the only track that I've ever owned, not that I've owned a lot, it's the only one I've ever owned that I can say I've made money with it. Yeah, good on you, good on you. It's a, it's a good dream. Been a real good track. No show pony, no speed demon, flies along all day. Yeah. It's what you want. A bit like yourself, George. Yeah, very much so these days, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good on you, mate. I really appreciate you being on today's episode. Thanks very much, Please appreciate it. I've heard all good things about you and uh, just goes to show, eh, a guy like this keeps the tradition going. Good on you, buddy. Thank you very much, Please. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks, Thank you. George. Thank you, Tom. Time now to mess with the big boys' toys. Now, we've got Chris here. Chris, tell us, what's the significance of the tractor pull? Well, Fletch, uh, what it is, it's a measure of how much horsepower and the pulling power of a tractor and uh, see how far we can go with it. We use what's called the weight transfer device. Yeah, explain that. Uh, so what it is, the further the sled goes, there's a weight box that moves forward. Now the further the sled goes, uh, the further forward the weight box goes, it makes it more difficult to pull because more weight's over the skid pan at the front. For these old tractors, I know that a lot of them have been reconditioned, they're true workhorses. Is it some pretty amazing stuff they're doing? Yeah, it is. Like a lot of this stuff's used, still used on the family farm. I think it's marvellous too that it's such a, well, it's old technology and it's very important through all our classic trucks, cars, bikes, tractors, the list goes on, that the young ones do come through and we start and attract younger ones to the fraternity. Yeah, I think that's very important because, you know, at some point, the older guys that used to operate the, this equipment first hand, well, they're not going to be around forever. So to impart that knowledge onto us is um, a, a really terrific thing. How, how do people get in touch with you guys? You got a website? Yeah, we've got a Facebook page, Facebook uh, dot com forward slash classic truck and machinery so uh, that's probably the best way to get in touch with us we have a vintage machinery group on facebook as well good on you. thanks very much chris that's awesome how good is this just some of the geelong classic truck and vintage machinery show for 2015 and you saw it first on classic restos classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the dvd box sets of the show classic restos merchandise information on joining us on a fletch tour and contacting the major sponsors as well as i say at the end of every show no matter where you're watching from every week please ride and drive safe i'm fletch and i thank you very much for watching you can like and follow us on facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos tv and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week.